What's going on everyone, it's the EV Engineer and in this video I'm going to be writing some bare metal firmware for the ESP32 microcontroller to toggle an LED. So recently I've been playing around with the ESP uh, IoT development framework and I was curious to see if I could write my own driver without using any of the header libraries that the framework provides. So through the programming guide I was able to find the technical reference manual of the ESP32 which is the documentation that lists out all the registers of this microcontroller. So if we scroll down to the GPIO section, I was able to find a simple GPIO output uh, explanation. And if you just click this, it has one sentence which says the GPIO matrix can also be used for GPIO output, setting a bit in the GPIO out data register will write to the corresponding GPIO pad. And then uh, further down, it gives a detailed table um, which lists this register in, in particular, as well as other registers that are useful um, for any sort of GPIO manipulation. So for example, this table here lists out all the GPIO registers. So through some trial and error in consultation with ChatGPT, I was able to write a GPIO driver and I'm going to be programming that driver again from scratch for you today. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the ESP IDF shell. And then I'm going to go to the frameworks directory, which is this one. And I have a folder called my projects. So I'm gonna CD into here. And sometimes I forget what commands that the framework provides. So I can just list them out by typing in idf.py and it will dump all the commands. So one of those commands is ESP IDF create project. So I'm gonna type in ESP IDF .py, uh, create project, and it wants an argument. So name, I'm going to say GPIO demo. Great, so now I'm going to CD into here and we have a blank folder to start our project. So let's CD into main and see what we find. So here we see there is a file called GPIO demo.c. Now another thing I'm going to do is open up another shell and type in WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. So I'm going to go to the C drive, Espressif, Frameworks, and then my projects, and then GPIO demo, and list out what I have. So we have main again, so this is the same folder we were looking at before. But now I can use uh, my new favorite terminal editor, NeoVim. So GPIO demo.c. So we can see they have a bare bones template for us to use, which is just stdio, and then the app main, which is the task main that the framework allows us to write our code in. So let's go back to the technical reference manual and see what we need. GPIO out register, read write, and it starts at this address. Uh, there is also a GPIO out W1T set register and W1T clear register. And these are actually very similar. So let's just click them and see what the explanation says. So the GPIO out W1TS is the output set register for every bit that is one in the value written here. The corresponding bit in GPIO out register will be set. Now, the difference between just using GPIO out register and GPIO out W1T set register is that if you set one bit in the GPIO register, for example, and all the other ones zero, that's actually going to manipulate all the GPIO pins. Uh, in comparison, if you just use this register and you set the corresponding bit in this register, it will only affect the one bit of this register and won't affect any of the other GPIO registers. So let's say you had a project on the microcontroller and you had several GPIO pins 
and you want it to set one GPIO out pin, you don't want to accidentally turn off all the other ones. And we're just going to use this register because it's good practice. So I'm going to open up main again, and I'm going to start adding the memory addresses that we are going to need. So let's start with this one, GPIO out W1 set register, and it's going to be at um, eight bytes offset from the GPIO base address. And the address is this. So let's also copy this register, uh, GPIO clear, and it's going to be this address plus four bytes. So copy this. And change this to a C. Cool. So now uh, we still need one more register, which happens to be the GPIO enable register. So we won't actually be able to write to the registers unless we enable it. So uh, we have to scroll down here and we can find the GPIO enable register. So let's also create a definition for this. Define GPIO enable. And this is going to be uh, 0x3FF44020. And I'm also going to define the GPIO pin that I want to use for my LED. So GPIO5, um, which is just going to be 5. And that should be it for now. So now that we have all the addresses defined, we can start writing our driver. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create pointers to these registers. And the way we do that is with a volatile uh, uint32 underscore t pointer. And we'll call this the GPIO out uh, w1ts register. And we're going to set that to the address defined above. But first, we need to cast as a volatile uint 32t pointer so that the compiler knows um, that this is a pointer. So this is going to be GPIO out w1ts reg. And we're just going to copy this line for our other registers. And let's change this to clear. And one more. GPIO enable register. I guess it's just GPIO enable. That should be it for our pointers. And now we can start manipulating memory locations. So the first thing we need to do is set the GPIO enable for the pin that we want to use. So in our case, that's GPIO5. GPIO enable, enable register um, data value equal to one shifted by GPIO5, or I guess just five in our case. And now what we can do is actually toggle the LED that we have connected to our GPIO5 pin. So to do that, we set GPIO um, out W1TS reg equal to one shifted by five. And then we're going to do something similar for clearing. Now, what we're going to need is a delay so that um, we can get a meaningful toggle on our device. So I'm just going to define a constant called delay milliseconds. And I would like to have a 500 
millisecond delay. And we're going to need to use um, free RTOS in order to get our delay. So I'm just going to come up here and do you include um, free RTOS, free RTOS.h. And then we'll do free RTOS task. H. So now we can come down here and let's actually create a while loop. We'll say while one and let's fix this up and add our delay. So in free our toss, the way we do that is we type B task delay and then we give a certain amount of our toss ticks to delay. Now, Generally, we don't know the conversion from milliseconds to ticks off the top of our head. So we can use this one function, which is called PD milliseconds to ticks. And we will give our delay in milliseconds. So I'm just going to copy this. Come down here, paste. And we now have an effective toggle. So let's see if this compiles. Let's close here. Let's go back to our ESP IDF shell. And I will say IDF.py build. And this will probably take a few minutes because this is compiling everything inside the framework, even though we're barely using the framework. So it looks like I made a silly mistake with a semicolon so I'm just going to clean this up and compile one more time and it looks like the second compilation worked. So we're now ready to flash the device so we can do idf.py-p and for me that is com3 and we'll do flash and monitor. So our program is now running and you can see on the ESP32 that we now have an effective toggle. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please remember to drop a like and subscribe for the algorithm and I'll see you next time.